The next step we talked about was really to say, example, how the component fail, the grid coupling. This is something that a lot of times once we start doing this for grid, grid coupling, if we set up a PM for this, you can probably step straight to what kind of inspections we're going to do. And you guys can tell me in three minutes. And it'll probably be pretty, pretty, pretty much right on. But I'm using something simple because I didn't know who's going to be in the class and what kind of, kind, of, kind of technical skills you guys have even. But using something simple and show you the steps, how we break this down. Because I think if we say, how, how would you inspect a, a, a coupling that's, that's, that's going on the run or doing what kind of inspections do we need to do in a shutdown? I think you guys can tell me that. Well, I'll show you the steps anyways so you can see the thinking process using something fairly simple. So how does it work, right? Very simple. But let's talk about this. There's a grid in there. I don't know if you, I, some of you may not even use these types of couplings. But there's two coupling halves. And it's basically what they call the grid coupling. I think Falks. Falk used to make these, I don't know if they still do. And then you have lubrication in between, and these, when they come under load, it's just the, the grid here is keeping the two halves together, so the force is on one and the transfers over to the other one. Pretty basic, right? And then we're looking at this thing, we can say, okay, how does it fail? This is getting into root cause a little bit, and we haven't actually started doing this at IDCON yet for the different components. We have jumped straight to what inspections you need to do for the coupling, but we start what we're going to start doing is we're doing a little documentation on if you look at the failure cost and effect diagram you can actually say how the coupling how can the coupling fail we asked it how can how can the coupling fail so if you want to call this FMEA you can we're not trying to get every single failure mode we're trying to get what's common well the grid can fail or the key in the shaft can fail and we know from experience this is a lot less common than this is right so we need to use our common sense here and our experience so we know we want to f focus on that one, it's much more important. Um, it could be stress, high cycle, meaning fatigue, a lot of small, small loads. It could be one stress overload, so one, a big snap, something that comes a very high overload of the coupling. It can be used straight mechanical wear on the grid. Um, basically the same thing on the key. And then we can say, what could cause a stress, high cycle and stress under this? Well, it could be some type of vibration, we could have misalignment, the control system from the engine, or from engine, oh, I had a Swedish guy was translating, it says, uh, from the motor, you have the control system, right? The motor control system, so if you have uneven control from that, that will cause stress in the coupling, right? There's some, that was something that maybe wasn't, when we did this exercise, may not have been 100% um, clear to start. There you go. <laughs> so then you can, uh, the, the, the motor control system could be increase the system driven end, some type of stress overload, maybe something is jammed in the whole production, so the, the driven end is probably jammed. Uh, not enough lubrication can cause mechanical wear, etc. So we call this a how can diagram. We also use it for root cause, and we go through this with root cause, but just kind of list. Couple of fail, it can happen different ways. It could be because of this and this and this. And now you have a nice little picture where you can say, okay, what can we do? Can we do something to reduce vibration? Can we even then eliminate it, or can we, can we find it early? Well, my vibration we can possibly measure on the coupling. Sometimes, sometimes not, because it's, we can't actually you know, measure the coupling, obviously. So sometimes we can pick it up, sometimes not. Misalignment, definitely we can do something about that. We can make sure it's aligned and so forth. Um, the control system, well, maybe we need to check that every once in a while. Maybe we need to check that load on the control system and see how it transfers over and make sure that that motor load is staying constant, that the speeds are constant. And as the speed is really what we probably would check here, I would think, etc. So you see, this gives us kind of a tool to think about it. Now, I realize, guys, that if I ask you, how do we inspect that coupling, you would tell me, oh, we take a stroboscope and look at it on a run. We check maybe a temperature gun. We need to make sure we need to have it aligned. We need to make sure it's lubricated ever so often, etc. right? I mean, you, you guys know this already. So it's not, so you have to be careful when you use this. For a coupling, I wouldn't suggest to use this more in teaching purpose, like I'm doing here, just to show the process. If this would be something more complex, this is a little tool you can use. And you say, how, how can this fail? And you can kind of look at each one of these things and kind of say, this is how, <coughs> how, what we need to do. If we start talking about motors, couplings, pumps, I think you can jump to that step right, right away. And that's where a lot of other people would argue with me, say, no, no, we have to go through a big analysis every single time. I think if we have the right skills in the room, we can say very quickly, this is what we need to do for, for good 
good maintenance practice and maintenance prevention, and these are the inspections that we need to do. I think we can come up with those pretty good. I do believe a craftsperson, operator, I don't care who's doing it, it doesn't matter, but that's usually the people doing the inspection rounds need a checklist though. Because I've tried this many times. If you take a centrifugal pump and you ask, I have had 20 people in the crafts people in the room and say, okay, how do you inspect the pump? And we write up everything they say. I give them 15 minutes and I write up every single thing they say. Okay, you're done. Yeah, we're done. Okay, you forgot to check the breather of that pump. There's 20 crafts people and they basically jumping jumping the step and just doing it in the, so, so just kind of show that we usually, we usually need a little checklist on what to, to inspect because we're going to forget. That's what I think. And then how detailed that is, that, that's going to be, and where that checklist is actually located we can discuss. It doesn't necessarily have to be everything on, on, on the inspection route that they carry either. Does this make sense?